despite deep divisions in the country, France has become the 14th nation in the world to legalize gay marriage. One of our users asked us to look into gay marriage around the world, so we thought we'd do just that. And who better to tell you the story than Laura? The Netherlands was the first to do so in 2001, followed by Belgium two years later. Since then, Spain, Canada, South Africa, Norway, Sweden, Portugal, Iceland, Argentina, Denmark, Uruguay, New Zealand, and of course, France, have all followed suit. When New Zealand's parliament passed its same-sex marriage law last month, those watching in the public gallery were so happy that they broke into a Maori love song. What about the other 196 countries around the world? The US, Brazil and Mexico all have some states that allow gay marriage but are yet to legalise it on a national level. Israel also recognises same-sex marriage though it does not allow ceremonies to be performed on its soil. Americans remain deeply divided on the issue however, so much so that in May 2008 same-sex marriages were granted in California only to be taken away again six months later when voters passed the infamous Proposition 8 amendment defining marriage on a heterosexual basis. It now looks likely that same-sex marriage will soon be approved in both Britain and Colombia, but in many other countries, gay marriage is completely off the agenda and gay rights in general are practically non-existent. The International Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Trans and Intersex Associations 2012 World Survey shows that homosexual acts are still illegal in 78 countries plus four entities, while homosexual acts are actually punishable by death in Mauritania, Sudan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Yemen and some parts of Nigeria and Somalia. Worryingly, in many parts of Africa, homophobia seems to be on the rise and many people consider Uganda to be the worst place in the world to be gay. Back in December we spoke to the gay rights activist Kasha Jacqueline Nabagasira about what it's like to be a gay woman living in the country. First of all you have to always live in fear of the unknown but the unknown happens to be known now because you could be attacked in the streets or of course there's a lot of uh, verbal abuse, physical attack thrown out of public places. I want to be in a safe space. I want to be in a free place. As ever, let us know your thoughts about this story in a comment. If you want to check out the full interview with Kasha, that's there. Our latest video is at the bottom, but most importantly, click subscribe. We'll see you again next time.